Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, Opie discovered his girlfriend was secretly working as a cam girl after finding explicit videos of her on her camera and laptop. She had posted a video of them together online without his consent and was planning to sleep with a fan who won a raffle. Shocked and betrayed, he ended their relationship, moved out, and reported her accounts as underage to have them shut down. Now, let's get into the story. My girlfriend and I were together for almost three years. I met her at work, and I had a huge crush on her before I asked her out. When I finally got the courage to do it, she told me she'd been waiting for me to ask her on a date. Everyone in the office thought we were the cutest couple. I thought so too. She was by far the best looking woman I had dated up to that point. That's not saying other women I've dated weren't attractive, they were. But my girlfriend looked like she could be a model. She was absolutely stunning. Our company ended up going bankrupt and there were mass layoffs throughout. Both my girlfriend and I were laid off. I found another job pretty quickly. It wasn't anywhere near as good as my old one, but there was room for growth. You and it gave me health insurance. My girlfriend, on the other hand, was having a more difficult time. She didn't want to settle for something. She worked hard to get where she did in our company and she felt like she deserved more. I started to notice when we would hang out that she had a lot of new things around her apartment. She had new clothes and shoes. She was buying expensive makeup and fancy home goods. She wasn't living like somebody who had lost their job, and I knew unemployment wasn't giving her that much either. I casually asked her about it, questioning how she was able to afford the lifestyle she was living. She told me that she had started freelancing online to make some extra income. I had no reason to doubt that was the case. I knew some people made lucrative careers out of freelancing, so it seemed plausible. About two years into our relationship, I asked her if we could move in together. My lease was set to be renewed in a couple of months, and I thought it was a good time for us to take that next step, especially considering it would make both of our bills so much more affordable. She agreed, and I moved in a couple of months later. After we had the original conversation about her freelancing, I never thought much more about it. But the first few weeks of living together, I noticed that she didn't do a lot of work. She always seemed to be hanging out in the bedroom or watching television. She was on her phone a lot, but I didn't think it was for work. I asked her about it again, not trying to be rude, but more so just questioning what it was exactly she did and how often she did it. She just told me that she got most of her work done early in the mornings and had the rest of the time free. One night she and I were getting intimate and she asked me if we could film it. My first instinct was that it was kind of hot, but I didn't want to be on camera. If the video of us ever got out for any reason, then my employers might see it and it could be difficult for me to get a job and things like that. She ended up convincing me to do it by promising that my face or any other identifying parts of my body wouldn't be in the video. She seemed to want it, so eventually I agreed. We did our thing and recorded it. It wasn't something I had an interest in ever doing again. Everything was normal for the next few months. We had gotten into a solid routine with each other and there wasn't anything major going on. She came to me and told me about a conference for freelancers that she was interested in attending. There were gonna be a lot of people in the industry that she could network with to get some new clients. I thought it was a great idea. She had already made a pretty good living for herself through her work and the ability to expand that business was promising. She bought her ticket and went on her way when the time came. It was a weekend-long conference. I was alone in the apartment for about three days. One night, I was feeling particularly alone. I remembered that she recorded us a few months prior, so I grabbed her camera to look for for that footage. I hooked the camera up to my computer and opened the video folder to grab the video and put the camera back. I saw that there were hundreds of other videos on the camera. I was curious, so I clicked on one. It was a video of her dancing in a room and stripping. There were countless other videos of her all over the apartment. All of the videos were extremely sexual. I was really curious about why she had them. I had a suspicion about it right away, but I needed some confirmation. 
I grabbed her laptop and looked through it to confirm if she was camming or not. She had a bookmark folder in her browser called Work, and when I clicked on it, there were several cam girl websites linked. Of course, her information was saved. I could log in and see everything she was posting and everything she was saying with all of her fans. Her account was relatively new, it seemed, but she had some very dedicated followers. There were dozens of direct messages that hadn't been read yet from some of her fans. They were saying very obscene things to her and commenting on her body and things like that. She was role-playing with them to get tips. One of the videos on her page caught my eye because it was the video she had taken with me. I was immediately panicked knowing that there was a video of me on the internet. There were a ton of comments on the video where the men said things like, I wish that was me. Not long after that video was posted, she posted something about a raffle she was holding for a lucky fan to be able to sleep with her. I felt like I was going to throw up when I read that. I was sick to my stomach. Her job as a freelancer was a lie. She uploaded the video that we had taken together without my consent, and now she was likely on her way to sleep with some random man from the internet. I looked through everything I could on the accounts, and I figured out that she basically held a raffle her men could buy tickets to have a chance to sleep with her. She had about 100 entrants in this raffle. In her emails, I was able to confirm that she was in fact on her way to sleep with the fan that won the raffle. She was gonna film it to post online. My girlfriend called me while I was looking at her accounts, and I answered. I was in shock, so I didn't know what to say to her. She asked me if she left her laptop behind. She was worried she lost it on the flight. I told her that it was there. Had she not forgotten it, I might not have known about what happened. It was almost like fate wanted me to figure out what was going on. I knew that I wasn't going to be with her after this. I'm a pretty liberal person, and if she had told me that she had this camping site, I might have understood. I would never have been happy with it, but it would have been something we could have talked about. But she posted a video of me on it, and she was going to cheat on me with a man who won a raffle to sleep with her. There was no way in hell I was going to continue this relationship with her. I called one of my buddies and briefly explained what was going on, and told him that I needed a place to crash for a few days. I got as much of my stuff out of the apartment as I could. I slept on it overnight thinking about what I was going to do after finding everything out. When I woke up in the morning, I checked her page out of curiosity. There was a video posted of her with another man. I couldn't stomach watching it, so I just closed it. I was beyond pissed that she had done that. Not only was it cheating, it was irresponsible. She didn't know where that man had been. He could have given her any kind of STD, and she didn't consider that. I decided that I was going to take the sights away from her. She had amassed quite the following, and it looked like it was only growing after she slept with a fan. I had an idea, and I didn't know exactly how feasible it would be because sites like these don't always seem to care, but I reported her as being underaged. I hoped that it would get the sites taken down, so she would be banned from them. I reported that on all of the sites that I knew about. My girlfriend got back home, and she messaged me asking where I was. I told her that I knew about her real job and what she had just gone to do. She tried to explain it to me. She told me that she needed more followers and that sleeping with a fan was a good way to get them. She had read articles about other cam girls doing similar things and gaining tens of thousands of followers. I wasn't interested in an explanation. She cheated on me and that's the only way I looked at it. I also shamed her for putting the video that I barely wanted to do online. I told her that it was over and I would be getting all of my things from the apartment as soon as I found another one. She begged me for a second chance and told me that I was more important to her than any of the other stuff. I just didn't care. We broke up and I found another apartment a few weeks later. The last time I ever saw her was when I was moving my furniture out. Out of curiosity, I checked the websites that she had her accounts on and I saw that three of them were deleted. I was glad to see that it was the three where she had the most followers. She still had two other accounts, and I knew that she would probably regain the traction she had on the other websites. But even if it was a temporary setback, I was happy with it. Today's second story. In this story, after 16 years together, OP's wife became distant and secretive and was eventually discovered to be cheating with multiple men, encouraged by her best friend Kim. He confronted his wife in a dramatic public setting with the men she was involved with, leading to their divorce. 
Now, let's get into the story. My wife and I have been together for 16 years. We were high school sweethearts, and she was the only woman that I had ever been with. We started dating our sophomore year of high school, and we had hardly been apart for more than a week since then. I got a job at my father's company right out of college, and we have been working to build up our life ever since. We have three children together, a lovely home, a vacation house, and just about everything else you could want. My wife and I got along very well. I've always thought she was perhaps the funniest person I've ever met. We got a kick out of each other, and I thought that the heart of our marriage was the relationship we had as friends. Our families liked each other as well, which was something we both thought was important before we got together. The only issue in all of this was that my wife's best friend didn't always like me. She had been close with her friend, let's call her Kim, her entire life. It was almost like they had one brain at times. When my wife and I first started dating in high school, Kim almost seemed to be possessive of her time. I thought at times that it seemed like Kim was jealous of the time that I was spending with her. Now that we're adults, things have changed and there isn't any hostility between us. But I wouldn't call us friends either. Kim is the godmother to our children and an important part of my wife's life. So I put up with the occasional side eye from her because I wanted my wife to be happy. I trusted that my wife always had my best interest in mind and wouldn't let Kim talk her into anything. One thing that Kim would always joke about with my wife was how I was the only man she had ever been with. She would make jokes about how my wife didn't actually know if I was good in the bedroom because I was all she ever had. She would just make little comments like that intended to get at me. Kim had never married and she had several boyfriends over the time that I knew her. She would always tell my wife about the things that they would do together and she was very open about her intimate life. What bothered her most about her was that she was not a good husband. What bothered her most about her was that she was a good husband. I about it was that my wife would ask a lot of questions. She seemed to be a little too invested in what was happening. I asked my wife about it one day because my insecurities about it had taken over. I asked her if she regretted only ever being with me. She told me that she didn't and I was silly for thinking it, but it was still something in the back of my mind. About six months ago, I started to really notice that there was something off about my wife. She was acting distant, and that wasn't like her. She was spending more time out of the house with Kim than she was at home with the kids and me. Now she was a stay-at-home mom, and I kind of figured that she was just going a little stir-crazy. I thought that she might have just wanted to get away for a little while and have some time to herself, so I let her have that. I made sure she was doing okay. I checked in with her to see if there was anything that I could do to make her feel better, but she just told me that she was fine. One night, she told me that she was going over to Kim's house and that she would be back in a few hours. I didn't think much of it at the time. I was just focused on spending time with the kids while she was away. She didn't end up coming home until around two in the morning. The entire time that I knew her, I had never seen her come home that late. She was always home before or around midnight. And if she was much later than that, she would let me know. When she got in, I asked her about where she was because I was worried I had expected her to be home around 9 or 10 o'clock, and she was much later than that. We got into a little bit of an argument because she thought I was being very demanding about wanting to know where she was. I tried to explain that I was just worried and I didn't care, but I was about to call the police and drive around looking for her. We ended up just going to sleep and talking about it in the morning. She apologized for getting into an argument with me, and we carried on from there. After 16 years of marriage, our intimate life did take a bit of a downer. It wasn't like it was when we were newlyweds, that's for sure. Still, we would have intimate at least once a week. After a few weeks, I noticed that my wife and I hadn't been intimate with each other. I thought back and there were a couple of times where I tried to initiate something and she turned me down. I was worried that there was something wrong with the marriage at that point. I figured that our intimate life disappearing might have been a sign of something else that I wasn't seeing. I talked to my wife about it a couple of days after the thought struck me. I told her that if there was something going on, I wanted to work through it and I was willing to do whatever it took to do that. If that meant going to marriage counseling every night of the week, I would do it. I loved her and I didn't want to be with anybody but her. She told me that there weren't any problems and that she just wasn't feeling like herself. A few weeks passed and I noticed that she was getting very sketchy around her phone. 
She bought one of those screen protectors that blacks out the screen if you look at it from the side. She changed her passcode and she almost never let it out of her sight. She had never been like that with her phone before. In fact, she had previously been so careless with it that she would leave it behind when she would go to the grocery store. At that point, I started to suspect that there was something on the phone that I needed to look at. One afternoon while she was taking a nap, I grabbed it to figure out what the issue was. She changed her passcode, but the fingerprints on the screen aligned with four numbers when I went to unlock it. As soon as I saw what they were, I knew she used our middle child's birth year as the passcode. I got in without an issue. When I looked through the phone, I found some very alarming things. The first thing I noticed was that in her photo gallery, there were a few very recent pictures of her body in tight outfits and a bikini. Alongside that, I found a few screenshots from men's Tinder profiles. Right away, I looked through the app she had on her phone and I didn't see Tinder. I checked the app store and it showed that she owned the app but didn't have it downloaded. She was being very secretive about using it. I ended up downloading it again and was able to get in using her Apple ID and a text message verification. From what I gathered, she was downloading it every day and logging in to check messages, then deleting it again. In her profile, she specified that she was looking for a discreet hookup and nothing more. The pictures I'd seen of her were being used as her profile pictures. There were dozens of younger men reaching out to my wife and telling her how good she looked. She was flirting with them and had even given some of them her real phone number. I checked her text messages and I found several muted conversations with unsaved numbers where she was sexting, role-playing, and exchanging nude photos with several men. What disturbed me the most with all of this was how well my wife was hiding it. She had taken a lot of steps for her affairs to be as discreet as possible. It had been going on for months and from the messages I could tell, she had met up with at least two different men in person. The first one was the night that she came home around 2 a.m. and told me she was at her friend Kim's house. The following morning, the man sent a message to my wife asking her if she wanted to do it again, but she never replied. The other guy she met up with shocked me. They had been having elaborate conversations about different kinks and my wife mentioned wanting to try bondage. According to the conversation, they met up so she could try that. They continued talking after they slept together and it looked like they were planning to meet up again. I was heartbroken seeing all of that. I love my wife and I thought we were happy, but I was clearly mistaken. I didn't understand how she could do something like that to me. I continued looking through her phone and of course, I found out that Kim encouraged her to cheat. Kim was telling her about something she had been doing with one of her boyfriends and my wife mentioned how she didn't feel comfortable asking me about it. Yu Kim suggested she consider opening up the marriage since my wife wasn't satisfied, but my wife said that I would never go for it. Kim basically convinced her that if I didn't open the marriage, my wife's only option was to cheat. I put the phone back and I spent the night on the couch in the basement because I couldn't stand to be around her. I didn't know what to do. She was my world and it had been taken from me in an instant when I found out what she had done. I hated her for what she did and I wanted to make her pay for ruining our marriage. I thought about it all day the following day at work. Finally, I had a great idea. I told my wife that it would be fun to have a double date with Kim and her new boyfriend. So she jumped at the opportunity to schedule one. We hired a babysitter and I made reservations at a nice restaurant downtown. When we got there, my wife was surprised to see that there were six place settings. She thought that there must have been a mistake with the reservation, but she didn't. Question it too much. We ordered our drinks and shortly after we sat down, the others arrived. My wife's face completely dropped when the men she cheated on me with walked in. She was speechless. She had no idea what to say. The night before I went in her phone and texted both of them, telling them to meet her at the restaurant before they hooked up again. Both of them were very eager to go. One of them asked what was going on and stood at the end of the table, very confused. I asked him if he knew that he was sleeping with a married woman. He was speechless and just looked at my wife for answers. My wife tried to tell them to leave because they had nothing to do with her actions. She had withheld a lot of the truth from them. Kim and her boyfriend saw that we were obviously having our own thing and tried to leave. I stopped them before they could and made sure the boyfriend knew that Kim was the one who recommended that my wife cheat. 
He was a little disturbed by that. They started arguing with each other while my wife yelled at me for embarrassing her. The men tried to apologize and explain that they didn't know. I didn't fully believe them because she was asking for a discreet hookup. Who does that if they're not cheating on someone? We had been married for 16 years. There was nothing she could have asked me for that I would have looked at her differently. If she was interested in BDSM or anything like that, I would have tried it if it would have made her happy. Everything she was saying was a load of bull. One of the staff at the restaurant came to our table and made us leave because we were causing a huge scene. My wife stormed out after people started staring at us. Her face was beat red and she looked like she was about to cry. The cherry on top of it all was that people were recording the fight. She tried to explain everything to me when we got home. She said that there were things she was always curious about, but she was too afraid to ask me about them. So she looked for other men to take care of it for her. She begged me to forgive her and promised to be more, more open with me in the future. I found a divorce attorney the very next day. Now my wife and I are divorced and currently going through custody hearings with our children. I want nothing to do with her and also it's been difficult. I ended up selling the house, so I could buy the condo that I'm living in now. She's living with Kim, who is also now single because her boyfriend didn't like that she ruined our marriage.